Hello everyone, welcome back to Electric Petrol Head. My name is Andy. I've been running electric cars now for three years, thereabouts. I've uh, probably done 35,000 miles in total. I love them, they're brilliant. So, if you're considering your first electric car, first of all, hit subscribe because I've got a complete beginner's guide to EVs that's coming out very soon. So hit subscribe now and it'll make sure you get to see that. But in the meantime, I thought I would do the five things you should be thinking of if you've got an EV coming or are considering an EV and just want to understand sort of the lay of the land a little bit more. So here's the five things. Number one, and it's the obvious one, you've got to know where you're going to charge your car. If you are fortunate enough to have a driveway, then that's going to be your charging point for probably 99% of the time. The reality of electric car ownership, if you have home charging, that's mostly all you use. And then when you go on the road trips, yeah, you'll stop off at an Instavolt or similar charger and just tap your credit card and pay there. But for most people, the charging they do the most is at home on their driveway. So you need to sort out your charging option. And you've got two options here. One is you could have just a normal three pin plug or whatever plug is in um, wherever you come from. But in the UK, it's a three pin plug. Just plug it into one of your wall sockets and charge like that. I know plenty of people who do this. It works, it's slow. But if you're the type of person who doesn't drive their car that much, and you're happy just to plug it in whenever you're at home, then that could work well. Better option is to have a dedicated electric car charging point. And that's gonna vary a little bit depending on what car you've got. But the majority of cars now have a CCS charging port, which has a top sort of socket, which is the type two, and then two additional sockets, which you'd only use when you're rapid charging. So for day-to-day -day use, you just plug in your type two. So if you've got one of those, you can get a very standard um, sort of commando socket fitted and then just plug a cable in, very simple. You could get like an OMI cable, which is a smart cable that allows you to link in with certain smart tariffs like Octopus Energy or something like that and charge at cheaper rates. You could get a Zappi or similar smart charger that does the same as the OMI, but it's a little bit more sort of permanent and it's sort of there on the wall and has a, a tethered cable. So that's a little bit um, of a better option than just a standard sort of commando but you've got to pay a little bit more for it. Or you could just have a normal dumb charger that has a cable and they're probably 300 quid, something like that, especially if you can get a deal through the car company you've bought from. And sometimes they, they, they have a partnership with a, a home charging installer and you'll get a charger cheaper. And then you've also got various grants and stuff like that, depending on where you are in the world. However, if you don't have a home charger because you say live in an apartment block or you only park on the road and you can't get a cable over to it, there's lots and lots of different options. So one, the simplest option is to understand where your local rapid chargers are and just put it on a rapid when you are doing some shopping, for example. Um, there might be some chargers locally that are sort of just slower chargers, but you can leave it overnight. Plenty of people do that. The app I would use is called Zap Map, and download that and have a little look around and that's gonna give you a really good idea of what's in the local area. But yeah, number one, get that local charge in at home or very close to home sorted. If you have any questions, just drop me an email or comment below and I'll help you out. Number two is the charging networks. Now, please, please, please don't stress out about charging networks. It's all too common that people fill their wallets full of RFID cards, they fill their phone full of apps, most of the time they don't need them. Have a think about the journeys you do. Personally, I have ZapMap on my phone, which is a great app for understanding where, the, where all the chargers are. And then I tend to stick to a few charging brands, like Instavolt really is my default choice. Um, Osprey are very good as well. And there's various other um, companies. What I would do is I would just understand where those companies are and think about the journeys you do a lot. Like we live in North Buckinghamshire. Our road trips that are beyond the range of our car tend to be 
somewhere like say Norfolk. So I know where there's a rapid charger in Norfolk when I need when I get there. Maybe look into a couple of others. Um, BP Pulse, so BP the sort of oil giant. They're actually quite a good company when it comes to um, sort of home chargers and also rapid and, and normal chargers all over the country. So look into their account. Consider you know signing up to them because you'll get a discount if you sort of pay their. I think it's eight pounds a month. You'll get a discount on your charging, which if you're using them a lot is obviously going to save you quite a lot of money. If you're interested, if you have a look on my channel, just hit subscribe and then go to my videos page. I've done a review on Instavolt. I've done um, the top you know, 10 different types of charging and all the different prices video. I've done a video about the UK infrastructure. There's lots of content there, so I don't want to repeat now. So yeah, go and have a look at those, that'd be great. Number three is plan a road trip. I think when you first get an electric car, the range anxiety thing doesn't really happen as much as people think it will. So one of the best ways of doing that is just plan a road trip. I know we're in a pandemic and it's it's not the time to go on a road trip, but once that's over, which will hopefully not be too long away, plan a weekend away, drive a few hundred miles, understand rapid charging and just enjoy yourself. Stick to the tried and tested chargers. Don't do what um, some people do and they just try to wing it and use their inbuilt sat nav on their, their car. Spend a couple of minutes on ZapMap, understand where the chargers are. If you've got a CCS car, like my BMW i3, go into Rapid, knock it onto CCS only and look where those are. You're gonna save yourself so much stress. Personally, I would just go via Instavolts. They're quite common these days. Um, Osprey are, are pretty good because they're at a lot of pubs. Instavolt are going into McDonald's. So there's a lot of places where you can charge up for half an hour, quickly grab a bite to eat, or just grab a coffee and just relax and stretch your legs, and then get back in your car and carry on. But I think doing a road trip early on in your EV ownership life just gives you that confidence booster. Reason number four, if you've got an EV on the way or you're planning to get one, if you're going to be charging at home, I can highly recommend you move over to Octopus Energy. I've done other videos on them that sort of explain my rationale for why I think they're the best company for an EV owner. But fundamentally, they give you some EV specific tariffs like Agile and Go. They're great. They give you some options whether you're likely to be charging at night and maybe you're away all day. Go is pretty good. But if you have energy use throughout the day, like you work from home, then Agile is probably going to be a little bit cheaper. And then you still get cheaper overnight rates as well. And Agile occasionally goes negative. So they'll pay you to charge your car, which is just mind blowing. But they're great for customer services. They're just a great all round company. And the even better thing is if you go into the description, click my link, you'll get 50 quid credit on your account once you've signed up. So you get literally, you know, that's going to charge your car probably 10 times. So I've just paid for 10 lots of um, electrons going into your car. So how good's that? Reason number five, if you've got an electric car coming, is relax, get excited, enjoy it, don't get stressed. Electric cars are so much easier now than they were, say, five years ago. Even three years ago, when we first bought our Tesla Model S, it was a case of well, Tesla charging or nothing. It's not the case anymore. CCS charging is everywhere. You can rapid charge at so many options. They are located in better locations. There are things to do whilst you're charging. Kate, my wife and I have always had a little policy of us of our own that we don't just sit and wait for a charge. We always do something, whether that's walking the dogs or getting some food or getting a drink or doing a bit of shopping, anything, but we don't like just sitting there. So this, sort of rubbish, sort of fake propaganda about EV owners being sat waiting for three hours for their car to charge. It's not happening. Just get out there, enjoy your car. You know, you're doing something great for the environment. You're doing something great for the, the health of the um, people around you via better air quality. You know, you're using renewable energy to power your cars. You're doing a really good thing, but don't let it be a stressful thing. If you're worried about anything, comment below or jump in the description and find my email address. Drop me an email like lots of people do. Ask me the questions. I'm completely unbiased. I can, I'm not attached to any brands, so I can really help you out.
So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the five things I suggest you do if you've got an EV coming. If you comment below and let me know what car you've got coming, that'd be fantastic. And I will you know, share the excitement with you. If you're thinking about getting an uh, electric car, again, comment below if there's a question on your mind, you know, what's putting you off? You know, what do you need to know? What, what's worrying you? Because the chances are, it's not something you need to worry about as much as you are hopefully. So thank you for watching. Please hit subscribe and like this video if you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.